a growing EV supply from many automakers, a slowing market, tough economic times, and draconian laws against internal combustion engines are combining to create the perfect storm that might capsize all non-Chinese automakers. Should they get out of China now? Does this include Tesla? And what happens if they do? Let's take a look. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. I'm going to start with some really upbeat news for a moment to begin this episode. Starship, two weeks to orbit or single stage to orbit, whatever you want to call this. This was uh, Scott Walter's uh, idea and it's a t-shirt. You can get it in the merch store. Anyway, I wanted to start with this tweet from SpaceX because it has 22 and a half million views as I record this. Vented interstage and heat shield installed atop Booster 9, Starship and Super Heavy are being upgraded to use a separation method called hot staging where Starship's second stage engines will ignite to push the ship away from the booster. And if you're a fan of the Soviet and Russian rocket industry, you will recognize this. These vents here in the top allow the second stage to actually begin firing at least one of its engines before the actual separation of the booster and the second stage. And here, of course, we see a close-up view of this, how big this actually is, right? These things are not, this is not small. The human being could basically fit through each of these vents. But the reason why hot staging is an actual thing that the Soviets and the Russians have been doing for a long time, and the reason why SpaceX is going to try to adopt this on their Starship is that the second you cut off the boosters on the first stage, the whole rocket is in free fall, right? So the thing is accelerating, which is pushing all the fuel down towards the pumps that need to feed the engines and everything. As soon as you cut that off, that fuel is just free floating in space. It's just blobbing around and everything. And so you can end up ingesting air bubbles and not get a clean start with your pumps because they don't have access to the amount of fuel that they want. So one solution to that is all motors, which is basically just small solid or liquid rocket motors on the outside of the rocket that just, you know, push it just enough, just a little bit enough to be able to push all the fuel down to the engines so that then the main engines can then cut in and actually accelerate the rocket further. The issue with ullage motors is that they are number one, they add extra weight to the vehicle. Number two, they add extra complexity. And number three, they're unnecessary if you do hot staging. Hot staging is generally not a problem if you're throwing away the booster. The interesting part here, of course, is that SpaceX, of course, wants to keep this booster and continue to refly it. So this is going to be really, really interesting. Of course, we're all going to get out our popcorn and, and watch this when it happens with the next SpaceX launch, which I've heard is going to happen anytime from Labor Day up until the end of the year or even later. Who knows when it's going to happen, but when it does, it's going to be very exciting to see the hot staging. I hope they get to the second stage separation. That would be a major accomplishment. And if they do, I have a feeling they will get into space with the second second stage. That part of the rocket seems like it's fairly mature at this point. So anyway, no matter what happens, as Elon Musk always says, excitement will be guaranteed. And now on to the more difficult and or terrifying news for legacy automakers. Sawyer Merritt posted a couple of days ago, Morgan Stanley's Adam Jonas on Tesla's China price cuts. Not only do legacy OEMs have to face tough EV competition in China from the likes of the vertically integrated and increasingly affordable EVs, i.e. Tesla and BYD, they also have to reverse the trend of decreasing sales volume, profit, and share in a decelerating domestic market. And here we can see a headline from Business Insider from today as I record this. The bad news for automakers in China is only getting worse. Of course, I will put links to all of these things in the description so you can take a look at this at more length. I'm not going to go through all the details of all of this stuff. I'm just going to touch on some of the highlights here. As the article goes on, Chinese EV makers have gained hold of China's car buying market. As EV buying in China wanes, it's bad news for Tesla and others trying to stay relevant there. Now Chinese automakers' next move is to capitalize on exports, a recent Morgan Stanley note said. We'll of course touch on this whole Tesla and others trying to stay relevant part of this in a little bit. The Chinese auto industry is increasingly one to watch, and it's threatening a slew of global automakers, now including Tesla. And this is where things get really frightening for everybody who is not a Chinese automaker. One estimate last month suggested that growth has continued. Domestic companies in China are on pace to control a majority share of of its car market this year for the first time. And of course, that means that Chinese automakers will be selling over 50% of all the vehicles that are sold into the Chinese market. And if you dial the clock back even five years, this is an almost unthinkable result. Finally, not only are car buyers there buying more and more electric vehicles, they're buying Chinese EVs, not imports. Data from Chinese advisory firm Automobility LTD found that as of the first six months of 2023, purchases of gas-powered cars in China 
had declined year over year, which is unsurprising because there are laws coming into place making it really, really difficult to sell gas-powered cars in China and people are not able to register the vehicles. So even though the price of gas-powered cars has fallen precipitously, in China, you can't register that vehicle, or at least not easily or not inexpensively, which means that it doesn't matter. It's just a piece of junk. It's a big paperweight if you purchase the vehicle. So that's a big reason why gas cars are not being sold at any kind of pace anymore. Plus, of course, Chinese consumers want the newest and the greatest, and that is electric vehicles. Anyway, continuing, while purchases of new energy vehicles, including EVs and plug-in high hybrids grew significantly, and more than 80% of new energy vehicles sold were Chinese brands. And this headline from MSN, China to shift from auto importer to exporter, says Morgan Stanley analyst after recent Tesla price cut. So interesting how headlines that are about import, export and stuff still have Tesla in the title. It seems to create a lot of clicks for everyone. But the upshot of this article is that China is taking over from Japan as the number one exporter in the world. And we're going to see a graph that shows that in just a second. So here's the Morgan Stanley note from August 17th. China EV price cuts, supply demand still out of balance. And one thing if you don't know the land landscape of China is that there have been massive price cuts in China, which have been just sort of like reducing, reducing, reducing the price of electric vehicles in China, which is great for consumers, but really, really challenging for all of the EV makers, of course. And then if you throw in legacy automakers like Toyota and VW and GM and Ford, etc., the ones who really aren't even making electric vehicles in the space, they're kind of falling off a cliff and becoming basically irrelevant in the Chinese market, which just so happens to be the largest automobile market in the world. So just touching on the boldface things here, and again, I'll leave a link to this in the description so you can read it in its entirety if you want to. Tesla China reduces prices again, mostly on their long range Model Y, which is not the biggest seller and a small amount for the Model 3s. But it's not just Tesla, which raises questions about China EV demand. And pay attention to this right here. This is especially important. All that excess capacity, in other words, there are more EVs in the market than there are people to purchase them right now in China, due to a lot of reasons. A big part of that is that China's economy has slowed down significantly. So there's an excess of supply in China and a reduction in demand, which means, of course, that they're reducing prices all over the place. All companies are having to do that to stay relevant, including Tesla. Anyway, all that excess capacity built up over the last 10 years, wherein China accounted for over 300% of incremental global auto sales, will, in our view, be allocated to export markets rather than domestic sales. In our view, China will shift from being an importer to an exporter of cars as supply demand dynamics invert this decade. China's July vehicle exports corroborate this view. So let's take a look at this exhibit two, <laughs> figure two. I don't know, exhibit two sounds very legal. Anyway, China overtook Japan as the largest vehicle exporter earlier this year. So if you look at this from 2019 to 2023 or first half of 2023, you can see that China went from a relatively small exporter, right? So all of these numbers in the first four years, of course, you have to divide in half to see what's going on this year. These, these will be double these numbers. But you can see in particular, Japan was absolutely huge in 2019, went down in 2020, 2021, 2022, kind of flat. And maybe they're going to make the same amount next year, but it looks like they're going to be reduced significantly. They'll probably be at maybe 80% of what they were in 2022. But the amazing thing here is that this blue column here is China, and China has actually grown from basically a spec here in 2019, irrelevant, all the way up to the largest exporter in the world. And this has got to be keeping auto manufacturers in Japan up at night, along, of course, with German and Korean manufacturers. If we then look at exhibits four and five down here, and if you want to look specifically at U.S. exporters, you can see GM and Ford, which are the two largest exporters. Stellantis has had some significant problems in China. But from these graphs, you also can see that GM and Ford are having very, very large problems. So if you look at 2018, 2017 in this range, which was pretty much the height of internal combustion engine vehicle sales, that you can see that GM in particular was selling a lot of vehicles in China and Ford as well was doing pretty well for themselves. But in 2018 through 2022, it reduced a huge amount. Ford actually made a small comeback in 2022. But 2023, if this is any indication, if you double this, you know, this is first half of 2023, of course. But if you double this, we're looking at way down here and, and Ford is barely even going to register here. So we're looking at gigantic sales declines for the two largest US auto manufacturers, not including Tesla, of course, because Tesla is its own beast. 
And then if you look over here with the same colors, you can see that blue is GM and gold is Ford and green is local players. I don't know if Tesla is included in those local players. I'm going to guess no, but it is possible that they are. But you can see that since 2020, there has been a very big drop off and 2023 is huge. And remember that this is market share. So this is the percentage of vehicles that Ford and GM are selling into the market, not the absolute numbers. And so this is a much more dire warning, especially for GM. I mean, geez, <laughs> between 2021 and 2023, they have really fallen off the cliff. And if we look at this exhibit six, you can see market share for EVs specifically of Tesla and Chinese OEMs and also Ford and GM. Ford and GM is a little bit of a misnomer here because it's basically the Wuling Mini, which is actually an SAIC and GM joint venture. And the car is sold for, I think, four or $5,000. So that number is making it look like Ford and GM are selling a heck of a lot more electric vehicles than they actually are. But even so, you can see that Tesla has taken over that number because the Wuling Mini sales have gone down, basically because there are so many reasonable priced EVs from so many players in China right now that people are not that interested in buying a four or $5,000 vehicle because that thing is unsafe. It doesn't have a lot of room. You know, it's a, it's a tiny little thing. So basically people have become less and less interested in that. And that means that even that sales, which doesn't really make anything for GM or SAIC, those sales are falling off a cliff, which means that Tesla is actually selling more vehicles into the Chinese market than Ford and GM combined. And of course, if you look at this last little part, you can see it's not smooth sailing for Tesla either. They have been kind of stuck at the low teens market share for quite a while, and it goes up and down, but it's an incredibly competitive market. And then finally, if we look at exhibits seven and eight, you can see that GM and Ford, while they have had reasonable revenue in the you know $30 billion to $40 billion range, and Ford has gotten up to somewhere close to $20 billion in 2016, they both have had a real reduction in the amount of revenue. Ford especially 2019 was a bad year for Ford. But the big thing is this gold bar down here is the net income that they're getting out of China. And you can see that, you know, even in their best years in 2017, 2018, it was only a couple of billion dollars. And for Ford, they've actually had some negative years in China. And of course, 2022 was negative. 2021 was barely positive. And for GM, it looks like maybe a billion dollars on sales of $30 billion. So it's a very, very thin profit margin that these companies are making. And of course, if you combine that with 2022 and 2023, where we see the sales dropping off a cliff at the same time, it starts to make a lot of sense that these companies are going to want to get out of China. So a couple of things. Number one, Tesla. What does this tell us about Tesla? It means that the market is very, very competitive in China, and it's it's a challenge for Tesla to maintain its market share there. Now, the one thing that we know is that Tesla, amongst all the EV manufacturers, is the only one that's making a reasonable amount of profit. BYD is making a tiny amount of profit on each of the EVs they sell, and a lot of companies are actually losing money on the EVs they're selling, trying to get market share, trying to be relevant in this market that's highly competitive and at the same time, when you've got an economic slowdown in that area as well, it's just a, it's a very challenging environment. The good news for Tesla is that they can continue to reduce prices by five or 10 percent or something. And that doesn't mean that they have to go into the negative for pretty much every other company in order to sell at those prices and reduce prices by five or 10 percent. That means they go from potentially making a small amount or losing a small amount to losing a small amount to a large amount of money. So Tesla is still in a, a very good position. I think. And you have to remember that Tesla is only selling at the high end of the Chinese market right now. So the fact that they have this kind of market share is actually pretty remarkable, considering that they're not competing in the like the 10 thousand, fifteen thousand dollar, even less than that price range. So as far as Tesla is concerned, I'm not terribly worried. It's a very, very challenging market, but they're doing well. But then we turn to all of the other auto manufacturers, all of them. They don't really talk about VW and Toyota and stuff specifically in this research note, but you can see what's going on here. These companies are becoming less and less relevant in the Chinese market, which means that they're eventually going to have to exit the Chinese market, declare bankruptcy, whatever it is they want to call this, they're going to have to exit the Chinese market. And so you might say like, fine, fine, fine. They'll still have the US market and the European market and the global market where they can sell into and all of that kind of stuff. But here's the rub with this. The fact that there is an excess supply in China right now means that China is turning into an export hub. And you can see that in the Morgan Stanley note, 
that China is now exporting more vehicles than Japan does. And this trend is only going to accelerate. Consider a Chinese auto manufacturer. They're making an EV and they have to sell it for $15,000 and a loss in China, whereas they can sell it for $25,000 and a profit in Europe or the United States. What do you think they're going to do? They're going to turn their attention from China, where it's a really tough market and they're losing money, to these foreign export markets where they can actually make money and they are going to aggressively grow into these other markets. So if the general population and especially if legacy auto manufacturers think that they're safe in these other markets, they are absolutely not. What's going to happen is that the floodgates, and they already are opening in Europe, just not so much in the United States yet, but these floodgates are going to open and Chinese autos are going to come in and they're going to undercut pretty much everything that's in these markets being offered by legacy auto manufacturers. And specifically, they're going to be offering electric vehicles when everybody else doesn't really have compelling ones, again, accepting Tesla. And what's going to happen is that people are going to go like, well, heck, this is a pretty reasonable looking vehicle. It has a lot of technology that isn't in a Volkswagen or a Toyota or whatever. And it's an electric vehicle and it gets good range. I think I'll buy that. I'll take a chance on it and we'll see what happens. And that means that Chinese manufacturers are not only going to gain a foothold, they are going to massively spread out into these other markets. And so if GM and Ford and Toyota and Volkswagen and all these other companies think that they're safe in these other markets, they are absolutely not because China is rapidly becoming an export hub. And now that they are the largest exporter of automobiles in the world, that's not going to slow down. That's only going to increase over time. And if that's not keeping legacy auto management up at night, I don't know what would. All right. I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it fun and interesting and thought provoking. Please let me know in the comments what you think about both the interstaging and the hot staging for Starship, but especially what you think about the Morgan Stanley note and what you think is going on and whether you think how fast you think China is going to be invading the rest of the world in terms of auto production. And of course, while you're down there, please do like the video so other people can find it. And of course, consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon, my YouTube channel members, and of course, my Twitter slash X subscribers. Thank you all so much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. And of course, if you want to join any of the teams, just check out the links in the description. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool merch, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. We have Teslabot t-shirts, the Tesla meme t-shirt, success is a possible outcome, 4680 battery cells. All of that stuff is on t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, and on and on. So check it out. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how going shopping for a new Tesla, a solar roof, a power wall, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.